Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Charlotte here for the part two of tiling my bathroom and today we will be working on the walls. So when designing this bathroom I really wanted to keep it in the theme of the rest of the apartment and clearly the metro tiles were already quite the theme. As you can see in the kitchen and the bedroom's bathroom I had found secondhand the actual tiles from the Persian metro as they were renovating the stations at the time. So not only the signature white but also the border tiles. For the foot of the bath, I had found just enough of the green skirting tiles, and at the top, we can find the Art Deco dotted wave tiles that were used when the metro was extended in the 1930s. So I had also like loads of leftovers of these white tiles, because um, I <laughs> miscalculated, to be honest, and uh, bought way too many of them. Which turned out well, because now uh, most of my tiles were already purchased for this project. The Paris Metro, the first line opened in the 1900 for the Universal Exhibition, but it continued to expand during the decades. Basically, the style will change depending on when that was. My original plan for this was to try and get those beautiful original 1900 tiles, which are, if you travel to the Paris Metro, and you've noticed those kind of things. Um, the beautiful ones are really Art Nouveau, but um, I think they're bay leaves. I need to check on that actually. Oak leaf. Oak leaves. So I wanted to buy them in the original RATP green, which is very beautiful. Uh, it's actually very close to this one. I'm not sure this one is actually. I think this is one to a slightly lighter than the RATP green. So I, actually, I went to the supplier of the like original metro tiles. Like since the beginning, it's always been this one supplier um, that is set in Paris. So it's called uh, Carré Ceramic, and I went down to their showroom in the um, close to Canal Saint Martin. I talked with the owner for a while and he informed me that there were very different shades of green because as the different lines expanded different people worked on it and they all had their own idea of what the RATP green actually is so that's why green is kind of a predominant color even though you also have some blues uh, some silver and some browns but green is kind of like the most emblematic to me anyway because it really goes with the outside uh, kind of green leafy art nouveau that I um, associate with the Parisian metro. So that was my original idea, but they're not cheap. <laughs> it turns out that it would have cost me just to do the idea that I had in mind, just a few pieces that I needed, which in my mind were not that much, would have cost me about like 400 to 500 euros alone, just for those. So yeah, I reluctantly had to put that idea on the back burner for now and maybe save up, you know, in a forever home and <laughs> I will do this. But I needed to find a kind of a cheaper alternative that would still be a nod to the Persian metro and have a little bit more of a different style that I can enjoy doing that is just not more of the same. So I needed to find a new option. This is when I remembered this design. I thought it would be very fun to just find some green tiles and just create a pattern that could be just something that could still be in the theme and just reference the Parisian metro in a different way. So I did find the green tiles in the shade that I wanted them on the website called Art Carrage, which I will link down below. Um, it was a little bit of an adventure in itself. Uh, I didn't need that much. I needed maybe like one box of like one meter square just to have enough room to do the design that I wanted and then I needed some half tiles. So yeah, and it turns out that for the amount of tiles that weren't that much, the delivery fee was almost as expensive as the tiles themselves. Uh, it was about like a hundred euros. So my husband and I just thought, well, if we're gonna pay a hundred euros, might as well have a nice weekend out of it. So off we went to Avignon to pick up our tiles in the shop's showroom. So when I say showroom, it was actually a very nice house with a lot of tiles scattered around the garden. And the owner seemed very surprised to see us come on foot to pick up the order. 
We then proceeded to spend a lovely weekend in the medieval papal city and its beautiful gardens. Even taking time to have little dance on the Avignon Bridge. Yeah, but you'd have to know the song for this bad joke to make sense. Just coming back from Avignon, I finally had my green tiles both in the full size, which is 7.5 centimeters by 15, and the half tiles, which is 7.5 by 7.5, obviously. Um, that suited very well with the white tiles that I had from previous projects. Um, and for the half tiles, I still had a few, but I was kind of running dangerously low and I got really worried that I couldn't find any because it's not so easy to find them. When you can find them, they are really expensive. Like I'm talking like two euros, 60 for one. Of course, uh, I did the first thing I do every time I'm looking for material and I went on Le Bon Coin which is a French second-hand website. And I saw that a guy was selling like, what looked to be like one meter square for like 18 euros, which is ridiculously low. Yeah, it's always good for that. In the second hand, like you always find some people who just want to get rid of things. So they would put things like at a really low price. And uh, yeah, no, it just worked out perfect because <laughs> then I didn't have to worry of running out. I didn't have to like count my tiles like I did for these ones because when you pay a bit more, like you want to keep it reasonable. Okay, so now that I have all the material I need, I can actually start with the tiling. And by the way, I'm cheating a little bit. The first couple of rows of white tiles I actually did a few weeks back. So we have here the last images of my mermaid hair before I liberated myself of the extreme heat that they conveyed. Enjoy. For the tiling, I used exactly the same glue that I used for the tomato episode. In this case, when it was a bit bumpy, because let's be honest, I was a bit lazy and I didn't prepare the wall correctly, which you will see will create a lot of problems on that wall. I decided to use the same technique uh, that I did for the tomatoes, where I would put the glue on the back of each tile and put them individually. But as you can see, once your support is really nice and flat, you can just directly lay the glue on the wall and spread it by leaving a few millimeters thick uh, and really make it even and then cross it with the notch trowel. Uh, that is going to help with the tiles really gripping to the wall and just lay them with the tile spacers. And it's just a lot quicker to work like that. So one of the main differences that I observed while doing this versus just doing a plain wall uh, is that you really have to cheat with the pattern. The traditional pattern for the metro tiles is to have a tile finish at the middle of the one below it. So in order to achieve this, especially when dealing with the green pattern, I really had to sometimes cheat and put a half tile where normally you wouldn't have one, really just to keep the original tile pattern that makes it so unique. Always prepare your walls before you do this. This wall was very bumpy and I didn't sand it before I started tiling. That was an enormous mistake that created a lot of annoyance. 
it would have taken me a lot less time to just prep it beforehand than to try to go with it as it is and then having to redo that wall about three times in parts. So a little bit of a coffee break to talk a little bit about how this is going. Um, so yesterday I started tiling, well a long time ago, I did the, the lower part here and that was before we went to Avignon to get the green tiles. Um, so yesterday when I started tiling again, I kind of had some trouble with that side. Um, so I had to go back and take away some of the tiles to reposition them. Um, it's, it was a bit scary, I was a bit afraid to break them. But luckily the glue didn't fully set yet, so it was really easy to remove and to clean up. So it was... Yes, but luckily the glue hadn't fully set yet, so it was really easy to remove. So, yeah, that went a lot better than I anticipated, and I was a bit nervous about it. But now that I've redone it and it looks better, uh, so the big problem was that there was too much of a gap between those ones um, at one end, so it looked a bit silly. And um, as I mentioned, the, man, the, the walls are really not straight, so I tried as much as I could to uh, make it level, and that was a mistake because none of the rest was fully level, so visually it looked like the leveled one was actually crooked, uh, and for some reason I, I thought it mattered on the last row. So yeah, it looked like this was completely like going upwards when really it was level, but you know, the rest, it didn't work. So yeah, so I went back and redid this, which I'm glad I did because uh, it was going to bother me for a really long time if I didn't, so. Maybe they're using the toilet. So I am aware that those images are not the most aesthetic at the moment. <laughs> this should change once we move out of this room with no natural light and uh, no linear construction shades and stuff and so much dust. And obviously my outfit cannot be too cute either, so... <sighs> So while I was editing, I actually found out that the colors were actually code in the Parisian metro. 
So apparently on the north-south line, the green stations were the one with the most connections, kind of the central ones. Originally, I wanted to put the oak leaf tiles around the window to kind of recreate how it borders advertising or the name of the mystery stations. And I thought it could be a nice effect around the window. And I just decided to frame the window with the green tiles instead. So for that, I had to cut some green tiles at a 45 angle to create some perfect corners. That ended up being a bit difficult to do because as I am not that precise with my machine and a slight movement can be very visible and not fit well together so there was a little bit of try and error there. I think in the end it, it turned out pretty well. Now for the grouting, basically you really want to mix it well. Uh, you don't want it to be too liquid because otherwise it will and it did <laughs> at some point just run everywhere and not fill the holes completely. So in terms of consistency, you're really looking for something close to cream cheese, <laughs> if that's any good indicator for you. So once you've cream cheese your wall, I usually just go in with my finger to smooth it out and to remove any excess of grouting on the tiles. It would also be a really good idea to have a humid sponge close by so you can remove uh, most of it as it's still wet. So usually you would wait something like 20 minutes, something like this, so it has enough time to set in place but not so much it becomes quite difficult to remove.
So it turns out that like the most difficult and demanding process of this project was to clean up the tile once I was done grouting. But because I waited a bit too long and let it set a bit too much, so it just got really dusty and difficult to wash. So it really isn't impossible to clean up the next day if you forgot or like me got too lazy and sleepy and just wanted to go to bed because you've been working very late. It just makes it 10 times more difficult. Okay, so that concludes part two and um, <laughs> I'm gonna have to do a part three because it turns out that I severely underestimated the amount of time that it was gonna take me um, to actually build the bathroom sink unit. Um, so that will definitely have to be an episode where we will see uh, me make the bathroom sink unit and install it and uh, finish the tiling finally. Um, so yeah, um, we will have the actual reveal next time. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed that video. Feel free to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you next time.